Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alan Paul. Now, you saw the title of the video. This is hopefully going to be a pretty short video. We're just going to show all you newcomers to No Man's Sky. And we're going to start out by saying, first of all, welcome travelers. That's what we're called in this game. Number one. Number two, I am doing this broadcast, if you will, this recording from my living room. So unfortunately, there's going to be a little noise in the background. My cat currently has the rips, and the kids don't know how to be quiet enough when they're stomping around the house. They're old enough to know. It is what it is. Uh, but thirdly, uh, if you can hear my voice, if you heard any of my other videos, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, he sounds either a bit rough or something's going on with his voice. Did he change something in the recording? No, I'm running a little bit of a head cold here, so my voice tends to drop an octave whenever I get a little bit of a sore throat. So uh, don't think of anything special in regards to this video. There's going to be nothing special going on. So anyway, just getting <laughs> just getting to the uh, nitty gritty of the matter here is this whole video is about how do I start No Man's Sky. So, because a lot of people start the game and they're like, I keep dying. I keep uh, having trouble getting it started. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to start it. So I'm going to do just, I'm, I'm probably going to delete the save right after we're done. So I'm going to start the normal game like everybody would normally do. We're going to get this ball rolling. Um, for some reason, no, usually No Man's Sky has some very upbeat music and stuff like that background. For some reason, it's giving us this melancholy, dreadful music almost here. Um, and, I, and it makes me wonder, when I see No Man's Sky, I wonder to myself as we're going through the stars like this. Uh, there's another TV show that started in the 60s that came, it was restarted in the 80s and 90s. And even today, we hear all about it. There are conventions based on that specific sci-fi television show that I'm sure you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, where no man has gone before is one of the taglines. So I wonder to myself how much of a uh, influence that show had on the game. But regardless of which, how do I start No Man's Sky? So again, this shouldn't be a very long video. Um, takes about... From the point at which we get to the main screen here, which it should be popping up in just a moment. So we're going to be in initialization. You notice I'm doing the storyline just like you would do. This takes about 50 seconds. And I'll let the audio go so you can hear it a little bit. And now as you're looking around the landscape like this, as your character is waking up, It's telling you things about your, your, your exosuit that you have. You can see some animals wandering around. You can see some stuff on the ground. The things you want to look for in order of importance are... Sodium is the first thing you need. Carbon is the second most important thing you need along with... Along with ferrite dust then dihydrogen, then cobalt, and then an and then an honorary mention is oxygen. Now you'd think oxygen would be at the top of this thing. Hey, I gotta survive. I'm gonna need air. Don't worry about it. You're gonna get oxygen as you go, and when you find your starter ship, you're going to get that oxygen. Now that panics everybody. Everybody's like, oh my god, toxic protection's falling. What do I do? It's telling you what you need to do. It says you need to perform a scan to find sodium. So let's hit C. But it tells us that our scan is critically damaged and we need ferrite dust. Now, I told you we needed sodium, right? You kind of need the ferrite dust first. What is ferrite dust? Let's pause for a second here. So it's telling you to gather the ferrite dust for repairs. This pauses everything, so nothing else is going to happen to you at this point. So hit your escape button, pause for a moment, breathe, relax. Everything should be okay. Uh, the cat's still going nuts in the background here for some reason. He just came inside and he's got the rips, so a lot of noise in the background. I apologize for that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get the ferrite dust. Now, ferrite dust, uh, for those of you who did a little bit in high school uh, or in uh, primary schools, they call it in other areas, ferrite is another name for iron. Uh, you get ferrite dust. Where do you normally find it? You're going to find it in the ground. Um, ferrite dust, in this case, is going to come from rocks. In no man's sky anything that is an inorganic substance what's the difference between inorganic and organic i'm pretty sure you know what the difference is between them 
that means you're not going to get ferrite dust from plants, but you're going to get it from rocks. Okay? So first thing we need to do is gather that. How do we gather ferrite dust? Well, we have something in our inventory called a multi-tool. You, you saw it at the very beginning. And you're automatically giving a mining beam with 50% charge on it that is charged up with carbon. That's why carbon is your second most important thing. So I'm going to walk over here, ignore that, and you can see that this is a carbon-based unit. And I get carbon from that. But these are not rocks. Th then we got to find rocks next. There's a rock right there. See? Ferrite dust. So let's shoot that. We're going to get some ferrite dust from it. See? About 11. We need some more from that. That gets us up to 20. Here's a bigger rock. You're obviously going to probably get more from that if you keep shooting it. Ignore the red bar at the bottom. You'll be all right, I promise. We're up to 50. And just keep going. Just gather as much as you can for the time being from multiple rocks. Now, see, it's telling you you've gathered enough. So we're going to go in here. We're going to add the ferrite dust to it by selecting it. And it's now fixed. So now we need to scan. Let's hit that C button again. And it tells us. Now, NA is your, if you remember the periodic table of elements, is the uh, designation for sodium. And what does it come from? This little yellow plant right here, sodium-rich plants. So we're going to gather that. And you know what? Before we add it and recharge, I'm going to go ahead and get these others because they're pretty close by. I'm going to use my jetpack to jet over there real fast. we got one right here. The more I can get, the better. All right. And there's one right over there. Let's go ahead and get that one first. Now this, I want to note here is a cave. We'll come back to that in a second. And here's the third one. Now why did I gather all of them? Because it gives me a lot more nanites, uh, pardon me, sodium. And you see it's dropping. And if I take it and drop it in here, it recharges it up to 100%. See? That's dropping again. We have 16 extra. But you know what? We'll be in good shape. So it gives us the happy music to tell you you did a good job. And guess what? It tells us that our starship is right over there, and we can head there next. Now, it's 700 units away. That's a pretty long little walk. So what we're going to do is we're going to gather up some more elements. Now, remember I said sodium's important, carbon, ferrite dust. So anything that has ferrite dust, gather. You'll notice it says analyze, and it has some question marks, and we'll get into that in a second. So let me get some of this carbon here from these little items here. You remember we were looking at those all earlier. Uh, there we go. More carbon, more carbon. Uh, let's get some more carbon. And it will constantly remind you that there's things that are happening and going on. Now, that's okay. It's going to continue to do that through the entire game as long as you play, as annoying as her voice is. I wish I could make her voice into, like, Siri or something like that, and I can't do that. But don't worry about it. So the reason I said that this is important is because it's a cave. Cave systems, even in the in the world uh, in general, have their own biosphere in them. In the case that you see my, my hazard protection suddenly went back up again. Because I'm protected from the outside elements by being within the cave itself. So that's good. So if you find yourself a cave when you're on your way to your ship, stop in, get yourself recharged. That's important. So again, let's go over the five, in this case six, items that are most important to you when you first start the game. Sodium, so you can recharge your hazard protection. Carbon, so you can recharge your mining beams, and you can give extra carbon into that. But carbon's used in a great many things throughout the game. Carbon and condensed carbon. So anytime you can get some carbon, go ahead and gather it up. You're going to need it by the hundreds. Uh, several of it. So I have it written down. Ignore the noise. Um, some of these planets have something on them called uh, titanic worms that jump out of the ground and then land in the, in the ground again. Uh, I don't know where that one went to, but he uh, he just appeared and disappeared, so everything's okay. All right, we'll show you that another time. Just don't get distracted by it. So carbon is the next thing. Ferrite dust, we already mentioned, we need a lot of. Um, you need, not just to repair your multi-tool, you need at least uh, probably a few hundred of it. Not many, you know, 200, 300 ferrite dust, and you can gather that on the way when you get there to your ship that is. The third, uh, the fourth most important thing is dihydrogen. That is a blue crystal, uh, crystalline structure that lays on the ground. Um, you'll see it. I'll show it to you in here in a little bit. You need those for certain items. There's a great many things that dihydrogen is used in, um, both in life support gels. It's used in um, certain uh, 
recipes to develop other products for your ship and for yourself. So get some dihydrogen, get as much as you can. At the very start, you need at least 40, at least 40, but get as much as you can. You can get like 80 to 100, 120 of it. That'd be great. Your fifth most important thing you can do, especially if you're going to travel on a planet that has a lot of problems with it, is to get cobalt. Cobalt is, conveniently enough, found in this cave. And you can see it's at these uh, stalagmites and stalactites. Okay? Now we can analyze it. Again, I mentioned that before. Analyzing it when you're using your PC is used with F. But you see, I don't have an analysis visor. I recommend getting an analysis visor installed because by identifying these items, you can see that what happens is as I try to pull this in, I'm going to get cobalt out of it, and I really do need the cobalt. Okay, get 20 of it there. Problem is, is that that item might have given me a secondary item that could have been useful to me. So when I go to my multi-tool, I can go ahead and install. You can see I have three pieces of technology I can install here, and I'm going to go ahead and install my analysis visor. But I need something called carbon nanotubes, which I do not have. That's not a substance you can find, but it is made from very good carbon, yes. So if we go back to our exosuit, we can see we have some carbon here. How much does it take to make a carbon nanotube? 50. So it tells you if you click on an empty spot, you can craft a product, product and in this case, I'm going to make a carbon nanotube. I used up a good amount of carbon here, but we'll get more. And that's the important part, is to continue to get more. Let's install that carbon nanotube. So now we have something called an analysis visor. And you're going to see at the top of my screen, I now have a little semicircular thing, uh, kind of an oval that detects which direction I'm going in. That's excellent to know. It shows you where your ship is located, if you're not quite sure. And all kinds of other items and fancy things around you. But the second thing it can do is it can allow you to hit the F button. You hold it down, of course. It tells you something about the planet. But if you look at an item, it can tell you whether there's a primary element. My nose is a little stuffy here. Primary element and a secondary element. So what is our secondary element? So we're going to an an analyze this real quick by scanning it with our left mouse button. And it tells us our secondary element is dihydrogen. Well, that's very handy. Uh, on other planets, you may find the secondary element is uh, chromatic metal, which is a very handy substance to have. Again, not quite as important at the beginning of the game, but you are going to need it. And really, any element that you can gather up is important to the game. So let's now get this. You'll see we'll get that cobalt like we did before. And as soon as the item is gone, another 25 cobalt, it tells us that we got one dihydrogen out of it, two dihydrogen, three dihydrogen. Wonderful. It's nice to get secondary elements out of things. And you notice that there's also stalactites hanging from the ceiling. They have a secondary element in this case. That's kind of actually rare. And it's going to give me silver. So we're going to take that real quick. Let me show you something about silver. Now I have another video regarding early money for you guys. And you see we got three silver out of that. It used to be worth a lot more, but these days, silver is just not worth as much. 186 units each, and you're going to find that there's other substances out there that are worth a lot more. Uh, that's only worth 34. This is worth 76. So see, it's even uh, worth quite a bit as well, but not as much as you think. So what do all these substances get me? Well, we're going to get one more thing. I need a little bit more dihydrogen and some more carbon, and I'm going to show you what you can make with all that. All right. Um, let's get just a little bit more cobalt. Um, you can see my charge is down to 18, 17. That's fine. Oh, and by the way, while you're in this cave, you can gather something called cave marrow. Now, anytime you, you look at something and it's got a little uh, diamond in the center, it means it's mineable with your mining beam. Um, if it just has an E or a letter in the center of it, it means you can just press and hold that letter to gather it up. So if I press and hold that and I get this marrow bulb see I got about 10 or 11 marrow bulbs you can turn those marrow bulbs into sodium but you need something called a refiner to do so and we'll get to that later there's also some other items in caves like these humming sacks and you notice it has an E here if you do this you can open it up and gather the pearl inside and yes it happens to be a pearl of decent value 
see it's 10,000 units each for each one of these and this is a good way to get early money but you can see my earlier video that I published in regards to eat to early money in the beginning of the game so let's get our way out of this cave I need to get some stuff like this carbon for instance a little more ferrite dust let's go ahead and get that we didn't get much carbon from that we are starting to run low on our charge on our mining beam so we're gonna hold off gathering ferrite for now and I'm gonna gather as much of the carbon as I can because we need the carbon. Now you see it also can analyze things. Let's see what we got. See, you know, it's always going to tell you. So you get condensed carbon. Condensed carbon is a very good element to gather up if you can get it. Um, because it's condensed, you use less of it in some recipes that you need, including charging up equipment. And you hear it here, the blue crystals I was talking about in regards to dihydrogen. Gather them up. And you see my charge is depleted. So we're going to go in here. And there's another way to charge up your mining beam. But you can take your carbon. Move over to your multi-tool. Just select that real quick. And you can drop your carbon in. Now whatever it used is going to charge it up to the maximum amount. And whatever's left over gets put back in your inventory. So let's gather up our dihydrogen real quick. These crystals don't give a lot by themselves. But because the patches are pretty decent sized. The patches on the ground that you get. You can usually get enough to get exactly what you need. So I'm going to continue to gather these up real quick. Oh, one more. There we go. That looks like all of it here. So we ended up with a total of 59 right now. And I told you I needed at least 40, so that's good. Um, there's also, if we look at some of these guys here, there's one other patch of carbon that looks different from the rest. It's usually in a clump of three and takes longer to get but we're going to go ahead and get as much carbon as we can. And you notice in normal mode, you're, in this case, it's a toxic protection that we have here. It's dropping slowly. It may seem to drop fast to you. It's really not dropping that fast. So what do we say? Sodium, carbon, ferrite dust from the rocks. And we do want to analyze the rocks, too. I failed to analyze them. Let's go ahead and analyze them, because sometimes they have good stuff in them. Oh, look at that. They got sodium in them, so that's really handy. The different types of rocks can be scanned as well. That one has oxygen. Very good. So this will help us on the way. This will give us more ferrite dust than we probably needed. But it gives us a little bit of oxygen as well. That one gives us sodium. And we all know we needed sodium, right? So let's pick it up. Gather it up. It's not a lot of sodium, but hey, every little bit counts, you know? And the oxygen. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's head towards the ship and see what we got going on. Your your uh, boosters don't last very long early game, so keep that in mind when you're trying to get up. So i got to get all the way up to the top of this cliff, um, which is going to be a real pain uh, while we're so early game. But, you know, it is what it is. And boost. Whenever you stop walking, boost up boost so early game yes it can be a bit of a grind see I can't really climb so you just let your you let your uh, act recharge there we go go up a little higher there we go got some NPC ships flying around no big deal now if you're really struggling to find your ship or you're having trouble getting there and you run across plants like this on the side Plants, and this is something that is not addressed enough in some of the videos I've seen, the plants that are native to a planet can help you. You can just gather them up, and if you look, what does this one do? It gives me 5% life support power by every single item eaten. See? 77, 82, 87, 92, 97, and I'm back to 100%. So gather them up. So if you don't have the oxygen to recharge, gather them up. You also run across these, and the smaller forms like these, which are about the size of what those di dihydrogen crystals are, condensed carbon is very handy. If you run across it, gather it up by all means. Okay, we're almost to our ship, and I'm about at the limit of the amount of time I wanted to spend on this video. So, You can also find, as you can see up here, some cargo drops. There's no harm in searching them and looking for items. Sometimes you get dihydrogen, you can get jellies, you can search this thing, and you might get something special out of there. Condensed carbon, see, pretty good. 
So gather it up as you go. And at night, it's actually easier to find some of the plants you need. Like these yellow plants are glowing on the landscape. So I take a look out there and you can see, I can see all kinds of sodium plants glowing. So once you get to your first night, a little bit easier to find those things. And if you're fortunate, you'll find a really big patch of them. And it'll give you several hundred of them. And then you're saying to yourself, I'm not going to have to worry for a long time. So by all means, that's what you want to do. Okay, we're almost to the ship. Ah, I got a little stuck there. Sorry. Yeah. Just like in real life, you get stuck behind plants, you know, just happens. All right, and there's our ship. All righty. Now, usually uh, on the normal mode, when you first find your ship, you're always going to be near caves, at least one. And that'll give you a little bit more protection if you don't feel like jumping in your ship. Uh, you want to go ahead and read the ball. I'm not going to do any more of the storyline, other than to say that this is going to get you what you need. By all means, go ahead and activate the ball here. It'll give you more information on what to do. Always take the items that are in these chests nearby. This one you can't get yet because you don't have something called an Atlas Pass yet. But you see I got sodium out of that one. I got condensed carbon out of that one. I got even more condensed carbon. It just climbed real quick. And out of this one, I get... Looks like more condensed carbon. This item here, go ahead and wipe away any feces on it. Yes, it is poop. I'm so sorry. And it gives you nanites, which are something handy to get in No Man's Sky. It helps you purchase upgrades to certain things. Now, you see all that running. I haven't even added any more sodium to it, and I'm only at halfway. And I can always jump in my ship or jump in a cave, and I can get myself recharged again whenever I want. These here are oxygen plants. You will find them dotted across landscapes on these planets. So by all means, pick them up when you get to your ship. There will always be four right by your ship. And you're going to end up with, what, about 80, 87. So that's good. And then when you get in your ship, you will be able to do the repairs you need if you followed my instructions. So what I ended up with is 60 carbon, which I did need. 185 ferrite, which you're going to have, that'll be excellent to be able to use. Um, go ahead and boost that in there real quick. I got oxygen, I've got condensed carbon, I've got cobalt, and I've got hydrogen, dihydrogen. So what do we need these for? You're going to need one dihydrogen jelly to fix your ship. If you didn't get one from one of the canisters back there, make one. You're also going to need a metal plate to fix your ship. You get that by... It's, as you can see, it takes 50 ferrite dust to fix that, uh, to make one of those. So make one of those. You're also going to need something called a hermetic seal, which you can see in here I don't have access to. But the storyline is going to give you access to the recipe, and they will give you one. So go ahead and go through the storyline. It'll give you the, the uh, piece that you need, uh, the hermetic seal. And the last thing you're going to need is something called pure ferrite which you make out of ferrite dust. Fortunately, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You'll need 50 of it, and you can only do it by getting a refiner. And as you can see, you do not have access. Well, you do have access to the refiner now, which takes a metal plate and oxygen, which is what, by, why I mentioned you needed oxygen. But you can make another metal plate and get a portable refiner. Don't do it yet. You're in the storyline. Follow the storyline. It will show you how to make the refiner. It will show you everything that you need in order to get this all taken care of. So... That's it in a nutshell. Now you see I did this very casually. It's taken about 23 minutes to get to this point. I didn't die. There's nothing to panic about. And like I said, if you ever feel like, you know, you're getting a little panicked, find yourself a cave, run inside until the arrow at the bottom turns to the right, and you're in good shape and it'll recharge everything. So, and this is your default look. You can get a better look later on. Now I've got other videos. For instance, I've got, and you'll see it appear at the bottom right hand side of the screen here in just a moment. You're going to see uh, my playthrough videos that I do all the episodes. It's about currently 18 episodes at the time of making this. Um, not all of them are present yet. They're released every week. So feel free to go through those videos. It'll teach you a little bit more about how to play the game. So this is Alon Paul. And if you like my channel, if you like the content, by all means, please subscribe. Hit the like button. It always helps, of course. And I appreciate any and all comments. I try to get to people pretty quickly on their comments. If, depending upon your time zone and where you are in the world, if you leave me a comment, 
and you note that I am Eastern Time in the United States, um, it may be nighttime here and I could be out cold. I could be making dinner for my family. I could be at work in the middle of the day. But I try to get to people as quickly as possible in their comment section, especially if you have a question. If it's just a comment saying, hey, I like your, 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 what you're doing, I love how the, uh, the, the, the audio was, or something to that effect, thank you. I really appreciate it. You will get a like from me, and I will throw some hearts at you. The only thing I ask, folks, and I'm serious about this, this is a family-friendly channel. Uh, again, I've got a family. I've got kids. I've got kids that watch these videos. Keep your comments clean. Um, when you can avoid using any kind of language, I please ask you to do so. Uh, there's no reason to use uh, any kind of language in any of your comments whatsoever. There's always a better way to describe things without using uh, foul language. So I appreciate if you could keep it clean. I try to protect myself and try to not use that kind of language in any of my broadcasts. So if there's family people here, if there's uh, uh, dads and moms watching right now, keep in mind that, yeah, your kids are safe watching any things I do on here. I've also got a Minecraft family night that I usually upload every weekend usually between friday and saturday today's sunday and the last one i did hasn't been uploaded yet but i'm going to get that going um but again thank you for watching hopefully this gives you a little less anxiety in starting the game those are the, just to re uh re-summarize what you need the most important elements sodium from those yellow plants i showed you carbon which comes from a lot of the plants on the planet that you're uh located on ferrite dust which has gotten from inorganic items, which are rocks. Dihydrogen, which I showed you with the blue crystals, and then cobalt, which you can find in the caves. And why do you need cobalt? I didn't really show you that yet, but you do also need oxygen. Let me just show you the reason I asked you to get cobalt and the dihydrogen. You can make something called an ion battery out of cobalt and ferrite dust. It only takes 10 cobalt and 5 ferrite dust to make one of these. Why is that important? And I'll show you. You see the green bar going down? If it gets too low and you don't have any sodium on you, but you've got cobalt and ferrite, you can make yourself the battery. And what you can do, and on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the X button. See, I've got gestures, but i got this little battery which says recharge equipment. And if I go through, I can recharge any of the items in here. If I go to my hazard protection, one of the things I can use is sodium or the battery you just made, which will always get you back to 100%, especially in normal mode. Okay? So that's what cobalt's used for, and that's why I consider it a very important item to have in the game. So, again, I put it just above oxygen, believe it or not, and things that you need, but it's always good to get every element you can from a landscape. So those are the five, six things you need in order to get things started. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, hit that like button. Please feel free to subscribe. As I always end most of my broadcasts, I always tell folks that it's always good to be kind to others, to never criticize kindness. And... Be truthful in all things you do, especially to yourself, because that's where it starts. Thank you again for watching, and we shall see you in the next video.